This week on For the Record, Sorensen weathers the storm. The former television meteorologist will be the next congressman for Illinois' 17th Congressional District. How he prepares for a big change in responsibility, what priorities he takes to Capitol Hill. Congressman-elect Eric Sorensen is our guest in studio. No red tidal wave. Republican gains in Congress not as massive as predicted. What you can expect from the federal government the next two years. And the mystery of Oz. The TV doctor and Trump favorite Mehmet Oz lost Pennsylvania's race for the U.S. Senate. How one analyst logically diagnosed the outcome. Local for you. From the heart of the Quad Cities, your local election headquarters presents For the Record. And now, here's your host, Local 4 News anchor, Jim Needleman. Hello, everyone. I'm Jim Needleman, and this is For the Record. Well, we survived the election, all those campaign ads you saw on this television station and all the rest. A few races are still up in the air. Control of Congress is getting clear, but it's not final. However, it looks like more of the same in Illinois and Iowa. First, we'll check on Iowa. Governor Kim Reynolds easily won re-election, and she'll enjoy wider Republican majorities in the state legislature. Take a look at the state House of Representatives, for example. Here's a party breakdown before the election and where we stand after the election. Republicans had a 60-40 advantage. Advantage in the House going into the midterms. A few races are close and subject to recants. As it stands now, the Republicans have a 63 32 advantage with the remaining races pending. Now, there won't be a huge change in the state Senate. Republicans joined a 32 18 majority before the vote. At the moment, one state Senate race is undecided, but Republicans extend their stronghold by at least one seat. That's 33 16 pending the outcome of that remaining race. Illinois has a similar story, except of course it leans heavily in favor of the Democrats. Governor Jamie Pritzker secured a second term in office with a comfortable win over state Senator Darren Bailey. He'll also enjoy strong Democratic majorities in both chambers in Springfield to pursue his policies. Here's a breakdown in the State House of Representatives. Democrats went into the election with a 73-45 stronghold over Republicans. They've already extended that to at least 77 seats after the vote. There are some races undecided and don't have a final number for the chamber. We have a much clearer picture for the state Senate. You see Democrats went into Tuesday with a 41-18 advantage in the Senate. Republicans actually made a little headway here and narrow the Democrats' majority. As it stands now, the Democrats will go in the next session with a 38-20 advantage over the Republicans. One race has yet to be decided. One high-stakes race that took a while to decide was the battle to replace Sherry Bustos in Congress, a seat definitely considered up for grabs after the new political boundaries were drawn, and after it was such a close call two years ago. While the Illinois 17th Congressional District seat didn't get called until early Wednesday morning, Democrat Eric Sorensen held on to the seat for his party. He claimed almost 52 percent of the vote over Republican Esther Joy King. That margin of victory was only about 8,000 votes. More than 240,000 votes were cast in this race. It's clear Democrats and Republicans wanted to win this race badly. Eric Swords and Esther Joy King spent more than $6 million combined trying to punch their ticket to Washington, D.C. And King was outspending Sorensen by more than a million and a half dollars at the end of September. Both candidates also very emotionally invested in the election. Congressman-elect Eric Sorensen is here, fresh off seeing that investment payoff. Thanks for your time and congratulations. Thank you for having me this morning. Has it sunk in yet? Slowly, slowly, um, but as slowly as it's sinking into me. Um, quickly realizing we got to get the job done. We got to get to work. It's not taking any time off and, and making sure that we're doing everything that we can because come January, we need that continuity to continue what Sherry Bustos has done for 10 years. How much do you think being that local celebrity, that familiar and likable personality from TV news in, in Rockford and the Quad Cities helped in the primary and ultimately the general election? I think there, there certainly it's like is. It's the only reason, but I mean. No, I, I think that there is that connection, right? Um, and I think it transcends politics um, because when we start talking about weather, it's it's the one thing that connects us all. You know, you go outside this morning and and, and everybody is out in, in the weather. You need to know what's going to happen. But it wasn't just on the every day. It was that I earned the trust by telling the people the truth and, and being with them in times that were scary when people are making decisions for their families. And that's what I realized that it's not necessarily about the weather, it's the fact that we need to make sure that our leaders are proven trustworthy before they go to represent us. Well, it's interesting because Republicans have done celebrity for a long time. You think of Arnold Schwarzenegger, Donald mm -hmm. Trump, Ronald Reagan over the years, Fred Thompson from Law and Order. He was a senator. So Democrats haven't played the celebrity card for him. And you're, I'm not saying that you're in that scale in terms of celebrity, but it's just interesting how Americans do like that connection to someone they know. Well, certainly at the, at the very beginning, coming yeah. up with, you know, the idea, where is my place? My, is my place 
being in Congress, um, looking before me, there wasn't another meteorologist to look to. Um, and so it was, it was harder to come up with a decision to be able to say, can I even do this? Is this even possible? And what we proven through this campaign was we were able to succeed even against this Republican machine um, that outspent us in the end. Now, there's an old political adage, it's one thing to win an election, it's another thing to govern. You, mm -hmm. you already kind of referred to that, like you've got to get to work. Right. How do you tackle that learning curve? Very quickly, um, and it's utilizing the relationships that, that I have already gained with members of Congress, but it's also the relationship building with the people right here. Um, it is making sure that we're working forward on day one um, to get out and about, to find out what people really need here. We have to be able to ta tackle the, the cost of food. Um, that's one of the things that, that we've got to make sure that our politicians aren't just going to continue to do this all the time. But there's so much procedural aspect to it, the committee aspect to it. There's mm -hmm. a, I mean, this, this is a hard job you, you just assumed. Right, right. I mean, and, and, and I hope that it's the most difficult job that I've ever done because I will persevere through it. Um, but I hope to be able to, to formulate the relationships with, with Darren LaHood and Marionette Miller Meeks because we've got to look at these districts. Um, the challenges that we face are similar. If we just stay on our partisan divides and we don't work together, how are we really going to do the job for all of the people? Well, you're getting to my next question because Democrats will likely be in the minority in the House mm -hmm. for the next session of Congress. We've seen the bitterness between the parties. What do you do to keep that from affecting you in D.C.? I think it is creating the relationships. It's making sure that we do um, work across the partisan divide. And, and Jim, it's thinking about the fact here that we live in a very diverse um, district politically. Um, understanding that this is, this is not a blue district, this is a purple district. Um, you know, and what I want to be able to do and, and my commitment to the people are to work for the, the 40 some percent of the people that didn't vote for me. I haven't yet earned their trust that they would elect me. All right, that's going to change because I will prove it to them over the next two years or I won't. We'll stop for a moment. We've got more ground to cover with the future congressman coming up. Freshman pressure. What Sorensen says about being pushed to fall in line by the party leadership for the record.